Fora TV. Idea Immersion. Visit us at www.fora.tv. The very language that he uses is overlaid by later anachronisms. There are especially four that I want to quickly touch on. They're kind of the four C's. Misunderstandings of church, Christian, conversion, and Christ. Church, the word that's translated in our Bibles, church, occurs only once in the Gospels. It occurs all the time in Paul, of course, because he's addressing what we call churches. But the word is ecclesia, gathering. And that's what they were. They were gatherings in people's houses. That's where the brothers and sisters met them. That was so normal that when Paul talks about his brothers in faith and his sisters in faith, he says they are my housemates, oikeiai, because that's how you met. They were not churches, and they were not hierarchical. They were not leaders. They were charismatic. They were very much spirit-moved. When he writes, he doesn't write to leaders. He writes to the gathering. And these were very uh, democratic, egalitarian gatherings, as you can tell from that baptismal hymn, all are one, all are, all are the same in Messiah. Uh, so many people have thought that he was misogynist because one of those inauthentic letters, the letter to Timothy, has the words, uh, women be quiet in church and just pay attention to your husbands. Well, that's a very late non-Pauline letter. But the problem becomes a little trickier when you see that even in an authentic letter, the letter to the Corinthians, first one, he, the very th same thing is said. Women, be quiet and pay attention to your husbands. The problem with that is that earlier in that same letter to Corinth, he had said, women, when you prophesy in the gathering, wear a veil. And prophecy was a a charism of the spirit was a high thing. It was not just talking in church. Uh, so there's a contradiction there which is easily resolved. The later, later one is an interpolation. It's an attempt to make Paul consistent with what they thought was Paul in the letter to Timothy. Uh, it can't be from Paul because Paul treats women throughout as equals and as very high uh, spiritually blessed. He calls one an apostle. He calls another a deacon. He refers to them as prophetesses, prophets. He says that they, uh, some are protectors of him and of the church. One went to prison with him, one woman. Another woman saved his life. Uh, the, the, he names nine women that he worked with. And uh, co-worker is the same word he used for his male associates. Now it's true he does not call any woman priest for a very good reason. He doesn't call any man a priest. There were no priests. The, pre the very word priest, hieros, doesn't occur in the New Testament until the late letter to the uh, Hebrews, and that uh, says that Jesus is the last priest. So women held all of the important spiritual charisms in his time. That's not uh, the mark of a misogynist. So our first problem is ecclesia is not church as we understand it. It's not a building, it's not a hierarchy, it's not an institution. Uh, the next problem is Christian. That word didn't exist either. Christian is a word that was invented as a denigrative term about the followers of Jesus and only toward the end of the first century. You know, that's often the case that a religious movement will be named by its enemies. Quaker, Ranter, Shaker, Mormon, Jesuit, all were originally denigrative, uh, named by the enemies, and then they, it, the nickname stuck. Same thing happened with Christians. There are no Christians in Paul's time. What does he call them? Brothers. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters of the gatherings. Uh, not uh, Christians in church, but brothers in the gathering. Now that's an important thing because I suppose if you asked uh, most people, what they know about Paul, they would know he, he was converted. He had a conversion. He had a road to Damascus experience. Uh, well, 
if there was no Christianity, what was he converted to? Uh, he never thought that he was a Christian. He never thought that he was converted. He was a Jew who believed in the Jewish Messiah, and he was trying to get uh, everyone to believe in the Jewish Messiah. And the way he preached to the Gentiles was out of the sacred scriptures of the Jews. He says, you are the seed of Abraham. He said, salvation comes only from the Jews. He had never left the Jews. He had never become anything else. He couldn't preach from anything but the sacred scriptures of the Jews because the New Testament didn't exist yet. And he never thought his letters would be put in. And he would have hated the idea of, if they were ever put in in a way that would be contrasted with the sacred scriptures that he knew and taught from and loved. So there was no conversion. So there's no Chris, church, there's no Christian, there's no conversion so far. The last of the big four C's is Christ. Uh, Christos, anointed, is the word for Messiah. And it should always be translated Messiah, because that's his message, that the Jewish Messiah has saved the world. Uh, so it's not a name. You know, people talk about Jesus Christ as if one was first name, last name. Uh, it's not. When he says Jesus Messiah, he's saying Jesus is the Messiah. And he's the only one who can save us. So for those reasons, it's very difficult to uh, get back to the original Pauline world. 